Today, the Bug Out Bike gets some new rubber. Stay tuned. Okay, so this is the reason that I'm going for new tires. Um, this is the crack on the front. The fronts actually aren't that bad, surprisingly. But the front and the rear have the same date code, um, 2913, which I believe is um, the, the 29th week of 2013. These back tires, however, are in very bad shape. The cracks are pretty deep. Um, and it just really wasn't safe to ride it anymore. Since they both have the same date code, I thought it would be best to replace them as a set. Also, that front, front tire is awful skinny. It's so skinny that it gets into all the ruts in the, these Denver roads, and I was hoping that if I went with a little bit wider tire in the front, that will help some of that. On the rear of these first gen 250 Ninjas, People have some issues with clearance when they go to a bigger tire. So I really didn't want to go with any size other than the stock. People also say that, you know, they're not quite as maneuverable with larger tires. So let's get these tires off. Okay, so the first thing you gotta address when you're um, taking off the tires is the fact that your bike's not gonna have any tires on it for a while. You gotta figure out a way uh, for the bike to get, you know, to stand up on its own without tires. So on this bike, it's pretty easy because there's a center stand. And so um, it's a little bit difficult with one person. Um, but basically, I got a bunch of blocks of wood and I you know, kind of stacked them up to the right height so they can pivot off the center stand. And it'll have another support um, kind of on the oil filter here. It seems pretty sturdy there. Um, it's not resting on the bolt. It's resting on just the front uh, of the cover there. But to do that, you know, you got to kind of push down on here, and I, it's hard to push down and slide that underneath here. And so, I have right here, um, it's, a, it's a bucket of concrete that I have, just something heavy to set on the rear of the seat here. So, set this on here. Push this down, relatively easy. All right, now she's balanced, front wheel suspended and the rear wheel can also turn freely. Next step is to remove the speedo cable. The next step is to remove the uh, caliper. They're on there a little tight, so to use some leverage. Here you can see I used just uh, three zip ties two just for length, and then one um, right around the, uh, the fork here. Now you can remove the cotter pin from the castle nut. All right, that side's a 22 millimeter. Other side's a 17. I had to support the wheel a little bit to get this to come out. So to get the wheel out, you kind of have to scoot it underneath like so, and then it'll come out. The next step is to remove the chain guard that's held on by two 10 millimeter bolts. All right, while we're on this side, I'll remove the rear cotter pin. And also loosen the, um, actually before I do that, it's a good idea to make note of where your um, adjustment is at. So I'm like just over halfway um, past the second notch there. So I'm adjusting my lock nut. Loosening it. This caliper is held on by six millimeter Allen heads. The top cap screw is in a weird location. A ball end Allen would work best. All 
All right, so you can see that I do actually have my caliper zip tied here. Um, now I'm loosening the bolts on the torque link. Now I'm loosening the rear axle. I thought I could get away with just loosening the rear torque link bolt, but you have to unloosen both. So now I should be able to push the wheel forward and remove the chain, where you kind of push the chain to the side and roll it off like so. At this point, it's a good idea to bag and tag all the spacers, sprocket, anything that removes from the wheels so you can hand the wheels off to the bike shop without losing anything. And um, take it to the tire shop with the new tires and we'll reinstall everything in reverse. This also is a good time to check your brakes to see how much meat's left on the pads. All right, so to check the um, brake pads, I know everything's stopping good, so I'm not too concerned, um, but I mean, I'm here anyway, so I might as well check. And I'm just measuring the thickness of the pads. Now standard, it says in the manual, is 4. Um, 4.3 millimeters. And I'm getting about 3.74. 3.74 I'm fine with. The minimum thickness is, is one millimeter. And then you can measure this guy. You get just over three. The front pads measured at 3.58 millimeters. Let's kind of look over the uh, rotors. I'm just looking for if there are any cracks or anything. I slotted, drilled rotors can develop cracks. See, there's no kind of major warping or anything like that. The front and the back rotors look good, so we're good to go. Now it's time to clean these parts off. Here I'm using kerosene. Now that everything's cleaned, I can go ahead and grease the parts that need grease. At this point, I have already modified the front fender to fit the slightly larger tire size. There will be a separate video that details this modification. The rest of this video will be dedicated to the reinstallation of the tires. So you want to make sure this thing's sucked in here. There's no gap right there. If you see a gap, you need to kind of turn it. There's two little tabs on the uh, wheel part that you need to line up. And then you can see that this, this thing can only turn from here to here. That's because there's a little tab on this guy that kind of meets up between two um, little tabs that stick out before. I'll put my, my washer and castle nut on here. This will get tightened to 65 foot mounts. All right. The eighth inch by inch and a quarter cotter pin worked pretty good for me here. Don't forget to install your speedo cable. Alright, so these are um, 12 millimeter sockets. Put this, and my book says 24 foot pounds. Alright, so on this guy, it says I need to apply grease on this insert here, and also right here, there's an o ring here around this. This groove right here. I'm going to take the o-ring off and lube it up. I'm also going to do the same to this guy. I don't see it on my sheet, but I think it must be it somewhere else in the manual. Grab this o-ring real quick. I actually see a little nick in this o-ring. The o-ring seals off this bearing right here. And the bearing seems to be in good shape, but if that o-ring doesn't make a good seal on here, you know, it's not gonna really protect anything. So, 
this guy needs to be replaced. All right, so I was able to get an O-ring and I got a bunch of cotter pins. There's a link to the O-ring I used in the description. It's an inch and seven eighths ID by two and an eighth inch OD by eighth inch in thickness. A little here on the O-ring surface. And you gotta make sure when you get a bearing, if you're not gonna get the exact bearing, you get the proper type that's resistant to grease in this case. And what I did was I got one that's slightly smaller in um, diameter, but the thickness is slightly larger. So hopefully it'll stretch a little bit to match a little bit better. And then try to pop it on. Now I'm gonna see if this slides on. This will be the moment of truth. Cool. I'm gonna clean this whole area and then grease, grease that guy. Inside and outside. I tried to go ahead and install the rear tire, but I didn't have the sprocket all the way seated. As you can see, the sprocket partially seats, and then you have to push it down to get it all the way seated. My foot to kind of lift it in place. Spin. Hand tighten your castle nut. Next, you're going to set your chain tension. And the other side. Okay, that looks decent. Now measure. Right, so that's about. It's about 28. Two. 25 and a half. Here you want to shoot for 35 to 40 millimeters of play in the middle of the chain. Let's try it again. Ah, that's 29. Alright, 29 to 25 and a quarter. So that means we're right or 37 and a half millimeters. So that's pretty good. Uh, that means now I'm gonna tighten the uh, this guy right here. Tighten the main bolt. I think it's 80 foot pounds. Here I'm using a 530 seconds by a two and a half inch cotter pin. The torque link bolts are supposed to get torqued to 24 foot pounds. Now that the main axle nut and bolt are tightened, you can tighten the chain tension lock nuts on both sides. Now to reinstall the rear caliper. This is a good time to service the chain. Start out with some kerosene to clean off all the grime. Pinching it down from the inside. So now that there's some of that stuff on there, try and brush the chain. Now wipe it off and repeat.
When you're satisfied with how clean the chain is, you can go ahead and dry it off and then lube it up. Okay, so I'm using this Chain Saver Wax Based Chain Lubricant. Let's read the instructions on our particular lube that we're using. Directions shake vigorously to mix all solids. Use straw for pinpoint accuracy, allow it 30 minutes to fully dry. We'll get so I'm going to do both sides. Put a little dot on one of these paint pen. I'll kind of mark this root. So I found my mark. Coming from the top side, do the same thing. Here I'm making sure to clean all the lube and kerosene off my tire. Got 30 minutes to dry. While I'm waiting, I'll go ahead and reinstall this guy. Once the lube is dry, the job is pretty much done. Anytime you do a job like this, especially with the motorcycle, you want to double check your work, make sure to go over any bolt you might have touched, and just visually inspect the entire bike. I took the time to double check my chain slack. Since I put the new tires on, the bike has performed a lot better. It's smoother, it doesn't follow the ruts in the pavement as much. It also seems a little bit grippier. Can't wait for warmer weather so I can get some more seat time. Thanks for watching.